Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm looking at the very latest new model from Auto Trail. In fact, this is a brand new model for 2022. It's the latest edition, the sixth model in the F-Line range, which last year was effectively a renaming of the Tribute all based on the Ford Transit, unlike the more expensive models in the Auto Trail range, because this is their entry-level product. And this new F68 is 6.8 metres long, and it's a two-berth with a rear lounge. And that gives it something of a USP, because there's nothing quite like this in either the Eldis AutoQuest range, or Swift's Edge, or Escape ranges. So here we have an entry-level two berth with the classic rear lounge. Let's take a closer look. Now, I should perhaps have said at the outset that I'm at the Caravan and Motorhome Club Sutton on Sea site on the Lincolnshire coast, and it has been glorious this morning, but the clouds are rolling in and I have a feeling I'm gonna get wet if I don't get a move on. So let's talk some more about this new F-Line F68. You might be looking at it and thinking, well, this doesn't look like an entry-level motorhome, and that's because it has got some options on it. For a start, it's got the driver's pack, and that gives you, amongst other things, the metallic paint. There's a choice of five different colours for the cab. It gives you the colour-keyed bumpers and the front fog lamps as well. The alloy wheels are a separate option on top of that, and the Lux pack gives you more, more extra kit, things like the solar panel, the TV aerial, um, the upgraded habitation door with a fly screen on it. And while we're talking about the habitation door, I'll just show you that if you press the central locking, just press it twice, and out pops the electric step. That's quite neat. Yeah, not only have you got the automatic electric step, but also, of course, the habitation door is linked to the remote central locking. Perhaps something you wouldn't expect on an entry-level motorhome. Now, looking down the near side, you've also got your gas compartment, room for a couple of six kilo cylinders in there. You've got your external barbecue point. Now, as I say, this is a really useful space, especially in a layout that doesn't have a fixed bed because it goes right the way across the vehicle and it's about 700 mil wide where it goes under the U shape at the back of the lounge. 370 mil maximum headroom in there. So plenty of room for all your outdoor gear. At the back of this F-Line, you can see that the bike rack mountings are already in place. So if you want to get your dealer to add a bike rack, it's simple enough. And you've got plenty of payload on this vehicle too. It's a three and a half tonne motorhome, so anybody with a standard car license in the UK can drive it. But you've got 550 kilos of payload in standard spec. Now, talk about standard spec, that reversing camera isn't part of that. That's part of the Lux pack that I mentioned earlier. Also, something I mentioned earlier is, of course, the second door into your external locker. You've got your fresh water filler here. That's an underfloor tank of 100 litres. Wastewater, that's 80 litres, also underfloor. Toilet servicing hatch, of course, at the front, and then your fresh water and wastewater drains are underneath here. A little bit fiddly. Um, I would prefer something a bit easier to use and a bit less likely to give you mucky hands. Now, before it starts to rain, and I actually need to use Auto Trail's branded umbrella that comes mounted on the door as part of the spec, well, let's go inside and take a look at the layout. Now this, of course, is what this motorhome is all about. A big, spacious, U-shaped seating area. Plenty of room to put your feet up or to invite your friends in. Yeah, two people are gonna have lots of room to unwind and relax when the weather isn't kind enough for you to sit outside. You've got reading lights in the two back corners. You've got these LED strips under the top lockers and mood lighting above the top lockers as well. You've got blinds and fly screens on these big side and rear windows. 
and you've got neck curtains as well if you just want a little bit of privacy. But the great thing is there is lots of light, lots of views out of the vehicle. Earlier on I was parked up by the sea with a view of the beach out the back window and it was absolutely lovely. Well, what can I criticise? Well, the roof light, these days you expect a great big hecky roof light over the lounge. From here you've just got a small, small roof light. But with this much window area, it's not a big issue for me. Um, somewhere to put your coffee cup I would like. I'm, I guess you'd end up just carrying a tray and putting it on this centre section of, of the UCT, but uh, it'd be nice if there was perhaps a little corner shelf for your coffee cup or, or perhaps a little shelf or a flap on the uh, the end of the kitchen unit there, perhaps something like that just there's somewhere to, to rest, as I say, your, uh, your cappuccino or your gin and tonic or whatever your poison is. That's otherwise, nice, light, spacious, airy seating area. Uh, over there you've got your TV bracket and that's a, a new new feature from Autotrail, new design this year and that just slides out um, and over there as well above the table locker you've got a couple of USB sockets as well as of course the 12 volt socket for your TV. Now of course in a layout like this your lounge is also your dining room. Simply slot the table out slide the table out from its own compartment, pop the door shut, unfold the legs and flip it over. Now if there's only two of you, well there's plenty of room but you could I think quite comfortably sit four people around this table. It's reasonably steady and of course it has the added advantage that being freestanding you could use it outside on a nice day. So lounge, dining room, and of course, this is your bedroom as well. If you want single beds, it's just a matter of unclipping the backrests. They all have these straps with press studs so they don't end up in a massive pile on the floor when you're driving along. That's a bit of a bonus. So undo all of those. And I have to say, this one that goes right the way across the back. That's a big old thing to move and it'll have to go in the cab at night. But that said, you've got a bed of over two meters long, just over two meters long on the off side, 1.87 meters long on the near side. And that's not your only option. You can also have a double bed. Now, you're back to the old-fashioned caravan style slats to do that. You just pull out and then the two smallest backrest cushions slot in and that makes a transverse double bed. If you prefer a double bed, you sleep across the vehicle and it is a really good size double. 2.1 meters long, well that's massive, by 1.57 meters wide. Another key aspect of course is storage. Now part of the under seat space, of course, you can get out from outside as we've already seen, but you need space for bedding and other internal stuff. Now there are no drop fronts into the under seat space. The, the actual locker area is, is brilliant because you've got your water tanks underneath. Of course that's not so good for winterization but you can't have everything. So lots and lots of under seat storage but it's not easy to get at because these settee bases aren't divided and then you've got these slatted um, bases to the seats or to the beds and those aren't actually hinged there they fit loose so when you try and lift them up they tend to fall down and then if you've still got the backrests in place they're not easy to get back into place again Ugh. So that's the back of the motorhome, which is the really important bit with a layout like this. But then just inside the door, just to the rear of the entrance, you've got your kitchen. 
and it's a pretty good kitchen, especially as this isn't a huge or hugely expensive motorhome. You've got your three burner Thetford cooker, of course your sink under a glass lid as well. Reasonable amount of work top between the two, or there's no flaps or anything to increase the amount of workspace. You have got a duplex oven and grill, that's a combined oven and grill so you can't use both at the same time. Decent amount of cupboard space, both up high with these side hinge doors and also at low level as well, and one large drawer for your cutlery and utensils. Then on the other side of the vehicle, you've got a tall, slim fridge, 142 litres, and that's got automatic energy selection, so you don't have to fiddle about changing it between 12 volt, 230 volt, and gas. Now, the other aspect that's at the front of the vehicle, of course, and this time just behind the driver's seat, is your washroom. And for a budget motorhome, it is a good washroom, primarily because it's got a proper separate shower. Just close these bifold doors, and you've got a proper wet area. It's big enough for someone like me, perhaps won't suit everybody, but it is a reasonable size. And I like these little baskets for your shampoo and conditioner, all that sort of stuff. There's enough room on the loo as well, the usual swivel cassette, and enough room to get your head down over the wash basin for a, a good splash and wake yourself up in the morning. Reasonable amount of storage. Perhaps odd that the roof vent is over the toilet area and not over the shower to let the steam out, but, well, generally it's a good space. Do note, however, that there is a significant step up into the washroom, about 190 millimetres, and that does, of course, reduce headroom in this area. In the shower, you've got a headroom of 1.86 metres, about six foot one in old money. And it's not just the washroom at the front of the vehicle. On the opposite side, you've got your wardrobe quite a decent size, although there is quite a bit of wasted space because the hanging rail is about 230 mil down from the ceiling. You can still hang reasonably long items in there, but it could have been better still. Below that, there's a single shelf and your vehicle electrics in there. It's not a deeper unit there because, of course, the back of this area is your gas locker. And then I'm really pleased to see that Autotrail didn't build the furniture as far forward as they could. So you've got plenty of movement on your cab seats. You can get them right back, recline them a reasonable amount. If you're tall, that is really, really important with this sort of layout. And they haven't just wasted the space either. You've got little shelves and cupboards behind the cab in these little corners and even somewhere to hang your jacket while you're driving. That is a nice bit of thinking. And then, well, they haven't got everything right because this big open shelf, well, that's utterly wasted space when it could have been somewhere to store your silver screens. And these little areas at the side, they look nice and they're nicely lit up, but the upstands are so small, they're not really going to keep anything in place while you're driving, and you don't want something to come out of there and hit you on the head when you go round and roundabout. Big opening uh, over cab sunroof, doesn't open a lot, but it's enough to give you a bit of ventilation in the front of the vehicle, and of course it's got a blind and fly screen on it as well. That just leaves us to talk about the cab, of course, and the fact that it's a Ford is a plus in my book. Of course, I haven't driven the very latest Ducato that's just been announced, but I hope to get my hands on one of those very soon. In the meantime, the Ford is good. Your seats feel lower, more car-like. You can sit in a more car-like driving position. The steering wheel isn't huge, it's a nice leather-bound wheel. The automatic gearbox, six-speed, that's an option, of course, but it's good. And Autotrail fit this Exent uh, 
radio unit with sat nav and so on that's part of the driver's pack in fact the driver's pack gives you the metallic paint power adjustable and heated door mirrors front fog lamps uh, body, body colored side moldings a uh, heated windscreen the trend dashboard whether that, whatever that means it just a slightly swisher dashboard i think uh, color coded front bumpers cab air conditioning automatic wipers and high series headlamps with static bending i think that means they help to show you around corners and the other pack that i mentioned that's the f-line lux pack sorry that gives you the uh, the radio unit nine inch uh, touch screen display with uh, motorhome specific sat nav the reversing camera shows up on there as well and it gives you the barbecue point the tv aerial the solar panel the omni vent that's the vent with a fan in it over the kitchen the upgraded door with a fly screen and carpets both in the living area and in the cabs so the driver's pack and the lux pack are things you're going to want on your f68 even if you're trying to trim costs they're pretty much essential can't confirm prices as of today but hopefully we'll be able to ping those up on the screen for you now I think that's time to go for a drive. Now I have to say I always enjoy driving these Ford Transits and this one's no exception. In fact it's as good as any of them, it's not too big. I mean, it's a full-size coach built nearly seven meters 2.35 meters wide but it doesn't feel that big um, and part of that is down to this six-speed automatic gearbox which is is very smooth it's perhaps not quite as sophisticated as the nine-speed box you can get in the uh, Fiat Jakarta now but it's it's certainly good enough um, and also this particular example has the engine upgrade and our standard you get 130 PS or 128 brake horsepower um, but this one's been upgraded it's got the option of the 170 PS 168 bhp engine which really does mean it's quite a flyer um, I pulled out of Auto Trail yesterday and you're almost straight onto the A180 dual carriageway and just like that I was up to 70 miles an hour and not just at 70 miles an hour but comfortably relaxed quiet smooth it's it's a van that you'd certainly be very happy driving long distance and things like the reversing camera and sat nav only just make life easier for you the only downside i suppose is that despite the ford having a softer ride than the fiat um not unpleasantly so it doesn't roll or lean too much it does yeah there's a bit more lean than you, you'd get in most fiats but but uh, it's fine um but despite the softer suspension there's still a few creaks and rattles and groans and things from the back which i find slightly disappointing normally um with fords and and mercs too you you get a bit less a bit less conversion noise than you do with a typical fiat but apart from that yep this uh, this van drives really well and the ford cab is a nice environment it feels much like a, a bigger version of a focus or a you know, any typical ford car but uh, the key thing is you just sit that little bit lower a bit more car like driving position there's plenty of adjustment on the on the steering wheel and uh, it's not a big wheel either it doesn't feel like you're driving a great big bus because of the driving position so i've now spent the night in this brand new 2022 season auto trail f line f68 and what do i think well i can really see the appeal now of this big rear lounge if there's only ever two of you you don't need rear travel seats it does feel a very spacious motorhome for just 6.8 meters long the shower the separate shower that's a really big plus over rivals that don't have a separate shower the beds work much better as singles because then you haven't got any joins you haven't really got any bad bed makeup at all i used the double last night and the center cushions do move about a bit and you do feel some joins in the bed so 
better to use this as a single bed motorhome, and in which case the bed on this side is absolutely huge. So, all in all, I don't know the price yet, but um, F lines in the past have started at under 50 grand. I'm expecting this to be competitively priced even when you've added on the driver's pack, the Lux pack, the alloy wheels, the automatic gearbox, and the engine upgrade that are all fitted on this particular example. But when it comes down to it, what this motorhome is all about is you've parked up in a lovely spot with a great view. Yeah, motorhoming doesn't get much better than this.